How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of F the Size NASCAR DFS Pick Show. I'm your host, TK Nation 47, joined with what, if you can see, Mega Ruler 31, having some lighting issues this morning. Mega, how was your day yesterday for the Xfinity and Truck Series? And uh, are you looking forward to another cup video today? Yeah, it was um, actually, I, I didn't make a ton of money, but I did profit in both series. Um, the We had the right plays and, um, you know, the three prime plays plus some other ones and in, in the lineup uh, really worked out, even with like Matt De Benedetto, like breaking down and losing an engine. It's, it's still the rest of the plays are solid for a truck. Um, you know, I was really high on, on Chandler Smith there. Uh, especially when I saw that um, Sheldon Creed was going to go to the back and, uh, you know, they yeah. sandwiched Kyle Busch. It was a thing of beauty. I, I absolutely loved it, pushed him <laughs> off the track so some other people could could win the race. And um, that was nice. And Xfinity, uh, Almondinger dominated. Like we, we thought, you know, he was my favorite guy up there. And I, it, it worked out quite well. So um, looking forward to Cup. And uh, I think this should be, another good day the hard thing is is i don't have any practice or qualifying data i didn't take any i didn't do any projections this week just simply because last year they ran on this track in a monsoon it was yeah. a horrible race um really can't take much away from it practice the first one there were a lot of spin outs and cautions so you really can't take much out of that the second one there was some pretty good data but you're not comparing like apples to apples for everybody so i don't really want to use that as actual da actionable data because it just doesn't help so um you know basically yeah. I think there's a lot of good plays, a lot of good places to go. If you're looking at the screen and you only watched a couple videos and you didn't watch the uh, truck and um, Xfinity ones, shame on you. No, just kidding. But <laughs> um, the baby blue ones are people that regularly drive in the series that are above average um, on road courses. Doesn't mean yeah. if they're not colored that they're horrible, but these guys uh, have shown over time that they understand the principles and stuff now i'm adding more and more people on the list it seems every single year because they're running more and more courses so more and more people are becoming comfortable with it like back in the maybe five years ago we probably only had like maybe a half dozen to a dozen people the ones right. that are in orange are kind of road course ringers they're ones that are brought in specifically just to drive on um, and you'll see like Kaz Grala and Luis Heselman have driven in like other series, Xfinity and, and trucks and stuff. But for Cup, I consider them ringers because they're not regular guys that you see in the field week after week. Yeah, no doubt. All right. So um, I didn't get a chance to watch uh, practices or qualifying or anything, but I think basically I'm just going to take historical data on, you know, who does well on, on road courses, traditional road courses as well. You know, we have like the uh, the Daytona road course and the, you know, Charlotte Roval. Well, those aren't technically road courses. They are lefts and rights, but they're more made up. And this is a traditional style. So when it comes to that, I think that's what I'm going to be looking at as far as who I like to play this week. Um, we have some really soft pricing. It looks like qualifying shook out pretty, pretty well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wow. we have the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to confuse a lot of viewers going to the television today that they see Grand Prix and they think, uh, okay, that's probably Formula One because I certainly was a little confused. I've never seen NASCAR add in, or implement the words Grand Prix into any of their races. So this is going to be interesting from a viewership standpoint. 68 laps, not a lot of laps led this week. So place differential, finishing position highest marks for us this week to look after just like the truck and xfinity video all right mecca take it away with some um with whatever you deem we need to start with back front middle talking points middle i think it because like you said pricing is kind of whack here um because i don't think they knew what to expect so yeah in, you could actually really play for nine to ten k guys and then drop down to some of these ringers in the bottom and take your final two guys and make a decent lineup today and i, I think sure, that's sure. what a lot of people are going to do and um I, i've done a lot of research i've looked at some other sites out there and see who else people are touting and i'm trying to take us in a little bit of a different direction because i think there's going to be a lot of um it's not like one of those ones where 
you had like a bunch of people mess up in qualifying like we saw earlier and you have like a like a one chalk build that probably is going to be have like 60 percent ownership it, it's not a case mm -hmm. like that but i think there's going to be some place it's kind of weird because we we looked at some guys up at the you know top of the xfinity race and the truck race and we thought okay you know these are some um people that we want if they get out and and dominate but as you said there's really not that many dominating points here there's a very very long track there's not many laps that that are led and i think one of the things that it, it kind of favors here too which really helps these road course ringers is if people aren't racing for points you saw what's called short pitting where they come in before like the end of the stage or something and get out there and get track position and then when everybody else pits because they had to stay out to try to get the stage points they are running for a championship it um really put them ahead it didn't work out for everybody but i can definitely see how like people who had struggles and issues were able to make up laps on this because like the laps are so long it's not like bristol where if um you have an issue and a flat tire by the time you pit and get back out there you're down like 10 12 laps so i, I yeah. think you know yeah, you can you can pit uh, you can pit at this racetrack and then still make sure that you're on the lead lap if yeah. you can time it up right so um yeah any anyone who spins out even i wouldn't get too concerned with because you can still be on the main lap even if you go down a lap um you know there's still ways you can get back on the lead lap quickly um so yeah like this this track's so long like you said there's there's going to be different ways to get back on the lead laps or not lose laps even if your driver does spin out um i think this is way too many cars though for this racetrack i think yeah yeah 39 39 on restarts is going to get pretty incredible uh i think late in the race if we start getting cautions it could get it could turn into like a a daytona uh scoring style where you're looking at a ton of guys just you know like what we saw in the truck video, but it could also end like the Xfinity series. So it right. can go both ways. And the thing is we did so, I thought, okay, fine. We're gonna be oh, wait, free from tire issues because it's a different type of track, but we still had tire issues and in practice and qualifying with this Goodyear tire. So they really need to fix Jeez. it. it absolutely ruined the Atlanta race last week because we were on stunt house. He was a great play. He was out there, he was, leading he was actually kind of dominating that race and just yeah. to be taken out by a tire it's just not really fair to these drivers who are working and teams who are working really really hard good year figure it out fix it sooner rather than later before somebody gets hurt so Amen. anyways i think if we look at the top five here um i think they're all right. gpp plays like blaney was has been fast this year he was fast in practice but and he's okay I gave him a blue stripe because he has been good on road courses, but I don't really see him as like one of the most dominant um, people here. No. Suarez, he had a really fast car and, um, you know, he grew up driving like go-karts and like cars on dirt tracks and, and things like that. So, you know, he's got a good background on this. Not he's got enough. some he, of the fastest practice times so far. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I didn't, I really haven't seen it much in like the car aspect mm -hmm. in like NASCAR. So that's why I didn't give him a blue stripe. So, but I, I just fear that I don't know if he can like stay up there all race with mm -hmm. some of these other guys that are um, in the middle that we've seen like do really well over road courses. Custer, he ran in the Xfinity race and um, he did okay. He was up there times uh contending but then again like i said he wasn't racing for points so he could go with a completely different strategy here he is so is that going to change things reddick you don't really think of a road course driver he has um gotten better at this but again i still want to see a little bit more and then bowman he did run the truck race and he did he did well there but it wasn't like he was out there dominating the thing so there wasn't I much think, competition for him out that way either. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think we, you know, so looking at those five, like I think they're all playable. I think, you know, you, you sprinkle them into um larger GPP formats, but there's nobody that really jumps out at me that says, play me. Your thoughts? I think I'm gonna play a little bit of Suarez, uh, just okay. based on some things I'm Your hearing. Man crush from. on him. Well, no, 
because I haven't played him all year and look how well he's done. So maybe I'm the jinx on Suarez, but there we go. Okay, don't play Suarez. I, I've just been reading I've just been reading some things on Suarez okay. and how um the team looks set up for a good day um in the ninety nine. And I think uh you know he does have some some, you know, uh dirt track not dirt track, uh road course uh background, you know, with growing up. And, uh, you know, we're in Texas and uh, Daniel Suarez from Mexico. There's going to be a lot of people there for him to see. And I think he's going to have a decent day. Now, Blaney, I think, would be the other one I might have a little bit of exposure to, but only in like 150 lineup settings. Um, I've been getting burned by Reddick all year. So I feel like I should jump on the bandwagon before I lose out on anything good he does. And uh, Bowman, I think, with the history he has just in the short weekend on the track, I think he might have a little bit of an advantage. But these are all guys that I'd, I'd like to play in the 150 max entries, maybe a couple of them in the 20 max, but nothing single entry. Like you said, definitely GBP plays. That's where my stance is on them. Uh, next up, we have Joey Logano. And yeah, let's, let's just do the next. Yeah, let's yeah. do the, the next block here, too. So the same thing. Um, Logano, he's had some success. I think he's starting too far forward. I just... Maybe he finished in the top 10, but I like other people in the 9K range better. Christopher Bell, he won the Daytona road course last year. Yeah. Has shown some good on there, but I still think he's a GPP. I don't think he's going to be very highly owned, so he might be a sneaky play. Denny Hamlin, it seems like this year he's like fallen off a bit. So that's why he's yeah. a GPP. I think been on that be- early. Yeah, I think with like name recognition, like he's going to be a higher own just because he is Danny Hamlin and people play him more because they're fans of him in DFS than really looking at his body of work. Justin Haley's a fade here. Um, he, he did okay in um, Xfinity and he did well qualifying here, but I just don't see this Kali car hanging with like all the rest of these cup cars with his lack of experience. But then Austin Sendrick, Cindric was very good on road courses. Oh, he's, he's a stud on road courses. Yeah, in Xfinity. And I, th- I think, you know, starting 10th here, there's some room to move up. He could get up and lead some laps there. So I think out of the five that we just talked about, I think we have more GPP plays. I'm not playing Haley. And Cindric, I definitely would consider in my cash lineup. I don't think he's yeah. a good building block if I can get him in. Um, that's great, but um, I, I definitely think he's somebody to consider. Yeah, I have Cindric above plays like Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell. I mean, Christopher Bell did win the Daytona Rose race, like you said, but I don't can I don't consider that more of the style of a traditional road course. Yeah, that's um, the the water park in the backyard, as I, as yeah, I described definitely. it. Like we put up a couple of cones and you know a sand dune and a sand yeah. trap and. A, there we, there we go. The dog and road, course. Show, road course. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like him, Christopher Bell. I, I shouldn't ignore him. Uh, you know, you get a little bit of place differential if he does finish inside the top three there at starting seventh. So I can't hate that. Uh, Joey Logano, I don't really consider much of a road course guy. I don't know what his status is going to be for today. 9,100 is going to be a lot to gamble on. Um, yeah, Denny Hamlin, I might be on like a full fade today. Uh, just really taking that stance that Denny is just not ready for the year. I think he's put on a lot more ownership duties with the 23-11 team, and I think that's why he's slipped in his performance. I'd rather play Cindric. That's the guy I'm going to be on here in the 90, in the 9K range. Uh, so definitely give me the, the two car. Now here we go. We got 11 through 15. We got Kurt Busch. We got a lot Indeed. of big names here. Yes. Now, Kurt Busch, the one thing that I saw that I clearly remember from the race last year, besides, uh, was it uh, Cole Custer submarining Martin Truex Jr., like one of the (laughs) scariest wrecks I've seen in a while, like a car on top of a car, but (laughs) Kurt Busch got knocked off the track. Oh, yeah, I remember this. And was able to do a masterful job not getting stuck like yeah he, he 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 had the right gear ratio he got he he shifted correctly he got back on that track and he was gaining ground after that spin i saw yeah, some really good things at this track from kurt bush i will be overweight on the field on him i i don't think he is a prime play but 
when I was trying to figure out the third one here, he came close in consideration. Sure. Not, not 70, saying 7,800 is yeah. a really good price tag. That's, that's a number we like to see. That's nothing that's going to, you know, um, like you can squeeze him in. You can even make sure you can try to get to him as like a fourth driver in like a third party core. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, I'll, I'll follow you with the Kurt Busch, Kurt Busch wagon. Um, I like him on road courses. I think he's a really good driver. And that's, and you know, we always play him at uh, Sonoma too. Kurt Busch was really good at Sonoma, which is a traditional road course out in California. Uh, he has a win there. He always has good finishes out there. I like him as well. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on board with Kurt Busch. So Chase up, Elliott. Have, yeah, I was gonna say next up we have Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson, probably two of the chalkier plays of the day. Chase Elliott, one of the best road course drivers out there. Obviously, nice. we're gonna play Chase. I have him as a GPP. Like I just really, he didn't look great. And I know you said he didn't watch practice and qualifying. He didn't have yeah. a ton of speed in practice and really he was looked a little in 2020 he was really good on these road courses last year he was in contention but i don't remember him like really dominating anything he got the win here i think was it here last year because it was rain short and they like kind of cut it off but i had the theory that chase elliott wasn't going to make potentially the um playoffs this year so nascar's like hey chase is leading he's uh, nascar's favorite <laughs> oh, driver yeah. let's, a lot of people um, said that yeah yeah let's uh <laughs> let's uh end this race he's gonna be locked into the playoffs so at least we know he's there um i'm not a hater on chase elliott i i do think he, he's a good driver but i've seen after his rookie year like he had a sophomore slump it seemed last year and i just really haven't seen he spun out a lot in this this new car Again, it's a different type of track, and so I will be playing him, but I'm probably pumping him more in my GPPs than in my cash lineups. So it looks like you went, you decided to go Kyle Larson over Chase Elliott. Yes, uh, with the prime tag here, uh, Larson winner at uh, Vegas or Auto Club earlier this year. Uh, Larson does have a win on a road course. Um, he yeah, seems to he have gotten better over time. Year. Yeah, he's, he's doing really well on, on these road courses. And I think you get some place differential there. And I think, you know, he's definitely one that's not afraid to get up there and to can, he's got a good pit crew too, that can get him out there and mm -hmm. um, get him. That's big. Places. Today. Yeah. So I really like Larson. Okay. We'll go Larson up top here. I'm definitely going to play Chase Elliott though, uh, just because of the road course pedigree that he has. Um, Definitely going to be involved in the 20 entry max. I think these two guys are um, going to be very, very, very high ownership. Uh, next up, we have Chase Briscoe, 8,900. This is getting insane. Is Chase Briscoe the best driver ever, and is he always going to make me tilt? I don't know. I, I have him as a fade here. I think he's starting a little bit too far forward. I, didn't, I haven't really seen a ton of great things for him on road courses, uh, and the price is a little bit high, so it's, I just... I'm just crossing him off my list today. I don't really see a reason to play him. Um, yeah, see, like he's, when, he, when he's priced up there with like Christopher Bell and Denny Hamlin and like Joey Logano, that, that's just not right. He needs to come back to earth no. a little bit. Thank you, because I'm getting real sick and tired of Chase Briscoe just dominating races or getting himself inside the top five. Like I know he was good in the Xfinity Series, and maybe he's figured out the cup car. Maybe the new car is is better for him. And I think what really it is, is Stuart Haas totally threw their entire season last year to get ready mm -hmm. for the next gen. They're a little bit ahead of the curve as far as uh, car setups on different tracks. And I think Chase Briscoe's benefited that. And I think once all the other teams figure out more of the car setups for these new cars, um, Stuart Haas will then finally take a step back I won't have to hear too much about Chase Briscoe, but he's getting on my nerves. <laughs> it's it's keep, one factor. I keep GK, fading I think, him and he keeps winning or keeps doing well. <laughs> do, do you know why he's doing well? And I, I believe this is true. And I think it started back at um, the Coliseum or whatever the, the clash oh, the, they, the they clash. had. He has figured out how to shift these cars I, I hear in like practices and stuff them talking about him 
like shifting, experimenting, like running in different gears other than um, some of the other cup guys just keep it in like one gear. And he's actually like using his different gears. And I think figuring that out has helped him. Now he's had some mechanical failures because of it also. But right. I, I think that's one of the things that's propelling him forward. And you know, maybe it is road course the shifting will help. I, I just think at 8,900, I don't really need him today. I I'm, mm -hmm. I like so many other plays. So the next one yeah, up go is on. Kyle, Kyle Bush. Yeah. Right. And here I have him as a GPP. And I think there's a lot of people that are super, super high on him also um, here. But I just, you know, he, he did run the truck race and he did look good there. And he probably should have won it if he didn't get like run off the road. But, you know, that that's racing. Right. But I, I still just any he, he's good when there's practice and they had like only like 20 minutes of practice. So maybe that helps. And maybe the truck races practice for him. But I that still don't. Practice, yeah. yeah, I still don't see him like gripping this new car. So my GPP lineup is going to definitely start out Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch. But in cash, I'm playing Larson and I'm, I'm playing some some other guys. There you go. I'm definitely in on Kyle Busch today. I can't help it after seeing him race that entire truck race, dominate most of it. I think he's going to have a leg up on the competition on where to run. Now, handling of the car could be a lot different. We know Kyle Busch, he's going to be complaining at some point. So I look forward to hearing that on the car radios. Um, yeah, next up we have Chat Ross Chastain, 8,200. I'm done fading Ross Chastain. I don't care where he starts on the racetrack. This he's guy matured. Is yeah, he's, he's going to just burn me every time I fade him. So I'm going to play him. So maybe this will this will be what it takes for him to stop dominating races or finishing inside the top five. And, and he ran a race um, this weekend here, and he, he did very, very well yeah. in um, equipment that maybe. isn't as good as this, um, you know, track house. They've been good. Like Suarez good is stuff. fast. Yeah, so good stuff I, I definitely house. like him. I, I like the price, and I think, you know, he's definitely one that you can put in your – your, your cash lineup. Yep, I agree. Moving on, we have Martin Truex Jr. Uh, the and I think we need to talk with we need to oh, talk with, about Harvick in the same breath here because I, I think they're very very similar guys that used to be decent on like some of these road courses, but I, I've taken the blue tags off of them because I don't see them as dominant anymore. It seems like mm -hmm. it's moved to a new generation of like Larson and Elliot and, you know, s some of these other guys. And Sanders. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like, that's like the next level even. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some of these other guys are, are starting to fade a little bit. So GPP because they could surprise you. They could do well. There is some place differential here, but I'm just definitely not making priorities. Yeah, if I'm using my 150 max. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. is probably going to be an underweight position on the field, especially with Kevin Harvick. Uh, 8K is not a bad price tag, though. I think by default, I'm going to have more Harvick than I want because of the price tag and the starting position, but I could easily see Harvick not finishing where he starts or even finishing worse. So that makes me, you know, scared to roster someone like Kevin Harvick. But yeah, I'm with you. It's only going to be rostering basically in case they surprise you. But I don't like them over, um, let's say, Kurt Busch or Austin Sindrick with two right. guys that are in similar price ranges. All right, moving on. Harrison Burton in the 21. This guy's been pretty bad this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think you've, you've been ahead of everyone in saying that Harrison Burton should not be driving this car. And I think you're correct. I, I don't know how much exposure I'll have to him, although 5,800 is quite low in salary. Yeah, but you could have Kaz Grala for $100 more, who is a road course driver, um, yeah. you know, and, and starting like 31st. So I, I think when you compare there, like you just there's no good reason to play Burton or I, I drop down a little bit more I, for 400 less or no Todd Gillian is going to be an excellent play coming up too for 200 less. So there's no reason right. to play Harrison Burton. If you end up in that price range, there's so many other people that you could flex to. There is a fade Harrison Burton. Next up is AJ Allmendinger in the 16 from college racing, 8,800 uh, cash lock um, yep. play Absolutely. auto hundred percent. <laughs> yep. dominated in. xfinity looked really good um here 20th. yeah yeah 
Yep. Price tags not even bad. Like this is this yep. should be your first driver in. Yep. Check. Yeah. All right. Check that uh, box. Next up, Austin Dillon. No. No. Thanks. <laughs> road road course. Austin Dillon. Not in the same sentence. No. Just move on. Uh, Chris Busher. I would play him over Austin Dillon. I think yep. Busher is a very consistent, good driver. Seventy three hundred is a little expensive for for your uh, your stars and scrubs builds, but I think he's going to be well in play today for um, for to, yeah. I like Bush. I like Bush. He's okay. okay. He's going to finish eighteenth, seventeenth, sixteenth. He's going to be all right. Uh, Bubba Wallace, any interest? You're the Bubba uh, guy. Just just the price on it. He did he did okay in Xfinity. They they lost. Um the transmission like they were in there like it kept on slipping out of gear but he was actually up in, in, in top five but he was in an elite car by xfinity standards this mm -hmm. car isn't elite it's it's not garbage but i no, just it's okay 2311 is all right yeah plus the competition i i think you can sprinkle them into gpps um and there's really nobody else in the price range that it, it he's in no man's land in pricing here because if you look at him, Eric Almarola, he's into, I, I, he's GPP, but I think he's kind of a fade. Um, uh -huh. But then Michael McDowell, who is coming up. I was going to say, I like McDowell couple, a lot better. Yeah, he, he like would be, range. if, yeah, if you, if you end up in that range, you're definitely going McDowell over him. So, yeah. So William Byron is the next guy here and almost Love everybody it. has him touted with Almondinger as like a prime play, a core play, a lock play. Sure. I makes sense. I can, I can see it, but I, I would rather go, I think, with Larson. And I think okay. that's gonna make me a little bit different and give me some some leverage. I will still be playing Byron, but he's not the lock to me. Um that I okay, think I can see else I can see the chalk build. Yeah, I can see the chalk build now that you say that. People are going to go Byron, Almondinger, McDowell, and probably Gillian, and then they're going to throw different ways of getting Sindrick and Elliott into their lineup. Yep. Kyle Bush, yeah. Hey, it's so it's good, four it, plays. I, I, they're going to skip McDowell, though. Um, they're, really? They're, good. Yeah, yeah, you That's can. That's where we'll be different. Yeah, and I think there's leverage. You, people are going to play Hanselman, said Hand. You've got guy. You're going to need like they're really going to play the ringers. Yeah, because and we'll get to them. So, but yeah, yeah, I, I've experimented oh, with some builds, and like I said, you can get a nine k nine k guy and three ten k guys, and some of these four k guys in a lineup, and not want to throw up in your mouth. So. Uh, I don't, all right, we'll get to that later. All right, moving on, we have uh, Eric Almarola, sixty six hundred. I think he's the yeah. same play as Bubba. Yeah, yeah. It just one hundred fifty max if you want yeah. some exposure, but yeah. nothing you need. Brad Keselowski is the biggest fade on the planet today. If, how he he's going to get banned from NASCAR? Like, how many more <laughs> rules can you break? Like, he he, he lost like what a hundred like owners points, like Owner hundred like, points, like yeah points and, and he even still got had violations in this race like that that was from the previous race like who's left running this team like oh my who, gosh. Who is, is, is he like gonna jump out of the car and change the tires and, and stuff during <laughs> pit stops because they're like so short-handed like i i just yeah. can't conceive him having a, a good day no not a road course driver already already has like no crew chief no car chief uh, this there's a huge dark cloud over that six team and uh, to to throw matters into worse he's just not a good road course driver so right nope 7600 not an even a good price tag so just oh. if you if he was like 5k I'd, I'd maybe play him but no thanks uh, McDowell as we had mentioned earlier um, when talking about Bubba and Almarola 6200 yes <laughs> we'll play McDowell um, but it sounds like there's a different strategy out there for uh, the masses I think he's a good play yeah yeah and uh, McDowell very familiar road courses drives well in road courses instructs youth to drive I think go-karts or something on, on road courses so mm -hmm. you know no, knows them very well and 
you know, 27th is a good starting position. He can definitely probably move up into the top 20. So yeah, a solid play. And like I said, might get overlooked with people going more stars and scrubs, even though yeah. 62, you would think is a scrub price. It's actually on the higher range of it. So, so I definitely yeah. think that um, his ownership is going to be medium and not high. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 6,900 is a little expensive for my taste. He does have the place differential that you're looking for, but Ricky, not technically a road course driver, um, more speedways. 6,900 is, it's tough. It's, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I'll be overweight. Yeah, just, just not the right race for him. So just, Yeah, just going to be like maybe level with the field and ownership and then not in my 20 entry max build. DK Sportsbook, what's the over under on how many times he spins out? Oh, at least twice. Okay. One, one, it'll be one say, and a half. I was, was, was going to say three. So, okay. We'll see. One and a half, bet the over. Um, <laughs> we have Todd Gillen uh, at 5,600. This is a really strong play. Winner in the truck series last year, I believe. Yep. In the 38 and truck. This year in truck series, his team won. Correct. Zane so. Smith. Dominated. Yeah, I want to give you a big shout out. You were on Zane Smith. Chan the truck was it Chandler race. Smith? No. No, Zane Smith Zane. dominated and won the truck series. Yeah. Uh, in that 38, in that 38 truck. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, Todd Gillen in the same car. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's going to be a, a big lock today. I think he's going to be quite popular and, and uh, rightfully so. Yes. Eric Jones, 7,400. This is, a beautiful, this is a beautiful piece that people probably aren't going to be able to afford. Um, really? Yeah, he has been good at road courses. This car has looked, looked really good in practice. So I, I think he's won. But again, I think he's in no man's land. And yeah, I think that people aren't strong. going to be able to afford him. So like I said, yeah, I would rather drop like – the fourth guy that people are going to try to jam in in the nine or 10 K range and split the money and go like Eric Jones and Kurt Bush in my cash over trying mm -hmm. to get, um, you know, another one of those top drivers because you're giving me like two solid drivers instead of like a nine K guy and a four K guy. Yeah. Uh, next up is Eric Kaz Grala 5,900. Probably going to be a very popular play just because everyone knows Kaz Grala is one of the better road course drivers out there. The I think money he, team. What can yeah. we what can we learn about the 50 car? It's uh is that Floyd Mayweather's uh yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And how do they perform in practice? Do you they, they they're okay, but I think the ownership's gonna be low because I think people are gonna look at the smaller team and they're gonna look at um if they follow all three series, I think they're gonna think like Jesse in uh in like Xfinity, who has like is backed by Emma Smith, but really hasn't made any difference because the guy is struggling to drive the car. Um, but Kaz right. is not the and Kaz is raced in um he was in Xfinity last yesterday. He was in um, one of the Tommy Joe Martin cars and and he did quite well. Uh he, he was up there. I think there got spun out in the sand. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think it was his fault, but like he did no. was able to like claw his way and, and, and fight back. So yeah, I definitely think that this is and again, I think he's gonna have low ownership because he kind of like um McDowell is on the higher end of the lower spectrum, and I think he might yeah. be out of people's budgets. Okay. Um, next up is Corey LeJoy. If this was anything but a road course, I would think this is going to be the highest price, play, you know, highest chart right. play of, this, of the day. But I think he's going to go overlooked. Think people think he might not think he's going to be ready for a road course. I like him. I'm just yeah. going to keep playing Corey LeJoy every, every week. Yeah, I, th I think he, he's still a, a cash play. If, um, you know, there might be some better guys in this range, but if you want something a little bit different and somebody that um, is consistent, then I yeah. definitely think he's one to look at. He's turning into like the lower end version of Chris Buescher. Yeah. Consistently turning in 20 top 25s. And or you, you used to have with... like Brandon Poole, and there was like another guy last year that I can't remember who it was, but they were. Exactly. They're around like the same bush range and each week they'd show up and, and just do their job and yeah. never going to 20 but... and move on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
And I think Ty Dillon, the next guy is like that also. Yeah. Ty Dillon really strong on road courses. Um, 5,100 is a really solid price tag. Didn't see much of them in practice though. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to play, I'm going to have some Ty Dillon, Corey the Joy, Kaz Grala right here. Yeah. I could see this being a, a stars and scrubs for sure with some of the, some of the pricing down here. Any love for Josh Balicki? He's another one that instructs people on how to drive on road courses. That really hasn't translated well to his own personal driving, but I think, you know, he's one that you definitely can consider in, in this range. I think out of the 4K guys here, I think Balicki would be my favorite. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not sure. I need I need to hear what you have to say about the last four. Cody okay. Ware fade. Yes. Um, no thanks. Now, now here we go. We have Hesemans said Joey Hand, Andy Lally. And Andy Lally called the truck race um in the booth. He's a road course guy. All of these guys, road course legends. Yes. Um, talk about yes. let's let's just say. Go ahead and give me what your breakdown would be of these four in this range. Hesselman is the cheapest guy here. Um, right. He, he's a self-funded car, which could be concerning. But keep in mind, parity here. Everybody has pretty much the same parts, the same car. That was the idea. So here's where it might manifest itself and help. I, in some lineups, if you're going like the, the crazy like jam in – Elliot Larson and Bush, and then try to throw in like William Byron, you're going to need to play Hesselman or you math doesn't work. And, and I, th I think he's perfectly fine for cash because he's starting low. He could only lose three spots, which is, is not that bad. If, if he, t if he ends up dropping his transmission on lap one and he loses three points for finishing 39th, he's still, I believe, going to get like two points for finishing. So he's going to come up with a negative one for 4,600, the cheapest guy on there to take a negative one. I can live with that if everybody else that I got in my lineup hits. Right. So that's basically what you're trying to do. You're right. Trying to make, you're trying to nail all five and then hope that Hesman's by, by default, well, by you, like you, attrition. You, 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 you got to you're gonna have out. two punts. You're gonna have two punts in that lineup. So if you're if you're going that high up, if you're going a little bit more balanced, then yeah, Hesselman would be the only one. Boris said I loved him back in like 1999 and like 2000. Yeah. Like <laughs> I can't I, believe I was story. being a, I was being smart and like saying, oh yeah, like he's this guy's like Boris said, and you're like, wait, he's in the Cup race. I was like, what? Um, <laughs> he he. He had some violations. Um, he didn't even have like a car chief. So I think they, they threw out like somebody, they had to throw somebody out on, on the team. So I think they threw out like the chassis engineer or something like that. <laughs> so I, I just, MBM's not a great um, team. Like Boris had a bunch of experience and, but I don't know like how many times he's driven on like Coda because that wasn't like a cup race. Like it used to, he used to appear for like Watkins Glen and yeah. um, Sonoma, which I mean, they're similar courses, but not quite. So I, I don't know. I, I think he's a GPP out of all these guys down here. He's my least favorite. My favorite favorite yeah. is going to be Joey. I, I was going to say, I don't think, I don't think his car equipment is up to snuff. Like, Rick Ware and Live Fast, um, you know, they're on the track every week. You know, like they have yeah. an idea of what to expect. Like the Hezeberg and the MBM, I'm really concerned with with those kind of with the equipment on those cars. And, and Rick Ware cars, that's you know, my we, take we've been Rick rolled before, but this is oh, like God, one of yeah. the best Rick Ware cars. And this car looked really, or maybe it's just a driver, it was cruising in practice. And he had a tire issue. And that's what knocked him down this far. This guy has definitely has like top 15 potential. He not racing for points. He could short pit and he could get out there and he could be top five. He could lead some laps here. So hand all in prime play. Love him. Lolly, okay. same thing. But and I think he's going to have high ownership also. But I just... I saw like what I saw from hand 
more than what I've seen for Lally. And I've I've seen I've played Lally in road races before, but I've just hand has impressed me more. So that's why I'm I'm more in on him. I'm not saying Lally's a bad play at all, but if a head to head, I'm taking hand. Yeah, we have a lot of value plays. We have a lot of studs we could play. There's going to be a like I think you're right. I don't think there's going to be a uh, a 60% cash build here. I think everyone's going to have different ideas of what they want to do. Uh, so this could be a really fun race DraftKings wise, just because there's going to be different um, different routes to winning today. And uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, Mega, any final thoughts here for the circuit of America's? No, no. Looking forward to it. Um, hopefully the tires hold up and um, it yeah. doesn't screw us out of cash because of Goodyear. Yeah, Goodyear. Step it up. All right, guys, that'll do it for the FSI DFS NASCAR video this week. Uh, please like this video. Comment below with any questions you may have. You can find us on Twitter at TKNation47. That is at MegaRoll31. And uh, you can find our, our website, fsidfs.com. You can get to a link to the um, a link to our Discord chat where you can get any updates throughout the day today. Uh, you can find some F1 uh, as well. That race starts at, at 1 o'clock. Please listen to Mega's video. I am going to do so after we get done here. And, um, yeah, looking forward to both races today. It should be fun. And uh, good luck, everyone.